Welcome to the Companion Chapel Everyday Bible Study Broadcast. My name is Mike, coming to you from the Great Lakes area of beautiful Ontario, Canada on this gorgeous. It is Monday, February 20th, 2023. Coming right up, it is the Book of Thessalonians, which also covers the seals, trumps, and vials. Do not be deceived. Our Lord Jesus Christ tells us all things as it's written in Mark 13. Now, we've covered the seals, trumps, vials in the book of Revelation, and they are also covered in many other places in the Bible. We covered Matthew 24, Luke 21, 2 Corinthians chapter 11, and today we're going to go to the book of Thessalonians chapter 4. That will be First Thessalonians chapter 4 and then Second Thessalonians chapter 2. Now, in these two chapters are where people pull out this rapture theory. And it's very unfortunate. It's very sad. The Bible is, God is not the author of confusion. The Bible was written in the common pen as Isaiah told us. These rapture theories and this, I'm pre-trib, I'm mid-trib. Well, how can you be pre-trib or mid-trib when we're going through the great tribulation right now? playing out on the world stage today how can you not see that but we pray for those walking in darkness let's open the book and let it speak for itself but please first consider your part in the many member body of christ the companion chapel is a registered non-profit ministry whatever god-given talents you have god expects you to use it in the many member body of christ help glorify magnify and broadcast god's saving word and you can do that just by liking the video, sharing the video, or I have something for you here. If you can help support the Companion Chapel, I'll send you one of these. It's an infinity chain cross. You can hang this on the mirror of your pickup truck. It's got a clasp on it. I've seen some people wearing these for a $10 bill. Go to companionchapel.com, Visa, MasterCard, PayPal, or e-transfer to email address companionchapel at gmail.com. And this is beautiful. You'll put it with your favorite things, and I'll send this to you for as little as a $10 bill. Help me pay for the internet here. Elon Musk, the richest guy in the world, started me off with his Starlink internet here for $121 a month. Now, I live way below the poverty line, but that's fine. But now he's jacked the price up to $158 a month. And yeah, like there's a small hydro bill here, and and uh, the internet so if you enjoy these broadcasts if you hear God if you like hearing God's word taught truthfully from the manuscripts through the lexicons and out from any English version that you have for understanding we're all part of the human family father wants his children back they can only be redeemed through our Lord Jesus Christ and you can't romanticize who you think the Lord Jesus Christ is he is the living word he came in the volume of the book in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God and the word tabernacled amongst us he's your teacher your master your rabbi he sets the path for us to get back to a place of peace beyond our present comprehension the whole human family in totality is what father wants but a lot of people don't follow that path they'll walk off that path stay on that path as it's written keep his path straight you don't make the path for Lord Jesus Christ He's made that path. You can make it not straight by wandering off to these traditions like a rapture theory. The word rapture is not in the Bible, brother. And it's not implied either. Or mid-trib or pre-trib. Well, yeah, we're gonna, we are going to go over that in the book of Thessalonians today. Because we're following the truth. That's what that path leads us to. The truth is our Lord Jesus Christ. He is the God of truth. The truth is a great separating force between right and wrong good and evil, and heaven and hell. And God forbid any one of us in the human family ends up on the hell side. Now turn with me in your Bibles to First Thessalonians. And I'm going to start off in chapter 3, verse 13, because that's where the subject starts. Okay. Now we're talking about you want to stabilize your hearts and be unblameable in holiness before God. That means we submit with an unquestioned obedience to our Lord Jesus Christ. Even our Father, at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, with all his saints, with all his saints. And for the deeper student, this word with is the word meta in the manuscripts. It's a big 
word. It's a word you have to know, especially today when that word meta is being thrown around. Meta means to walk amongst your very psyche, your spirit, your mental disposition. Be careful who you're allowing to do that. Meta. There's a meta right now, destitute of truth. There's a meta also, our Lord Jesus Christ, with his saints. That's the set aside ones. You sanctify yourself. That means you signal to God and you signal to others, I'm a man, woman, or child of God. I am meek. And what meek means in the Hebrew is much different than what meek means in the English. English, it means to be submissive and easy imposed upon. But to be meek, the meek shall inherit the earth. The meek shall inherit the kingdom of heaven. The meek shall inherit inner peace. We'll go back to a place of peace beyond our present comprehension. A place of safety. A place of perpetual friendship. A place of unity. A place where people come to an understanding of each other. There's no pointing fingers at each other. There's no guile. There's no malice. There's no what's in it for me. But right now, meek means to afflict yourself with self-discipline, learning to say no to yourself in the face of all the vain curiosities that you'll confront daily. The assertion of willpower over basic desires. It's the difference between happiness and pleasure. There's one meta. Oh, that gives you pleasure. You can scroll down Facebook's meta. I hope I don't get kicked off YouTube for this again. All You can do that for hours in the day. Does it make you happy? No, it's little bursts of pleasure, little bursts of pleasure, all these false positives. And they're just destitute of truth. They're just censored. They censor the truth on that platform. Or Jesus Christ meta with, that's meta, his saints, his set aside ones. Now let's just skip over a little bit. I don't have, you know, if we were here having a Bible study, that'd be the greatest thing. And you're invited here. Everybody's invited here. God allowed me this place. It's 77 acres of land here. You can come here for a Bible study anytime. I'll put the address on the screen. I'm not hiding from anybody. And that'd be the greatest thing. Then we could go over all these. I can teach this whole book chapter by chapter, verse by verse, line by line. It's the greatest thing. And we can learn it together. But for the sake of time today, Let's go over to verse 13 of chapter 4 and let's get into this lesson. It, there's the subject. It is the return of Jesus Christ. He's not alone with his set-aside ones. And then Paul says in verse 13, I would have you not be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep. That's people that have passed on. Where did the dead people go? Are they languishing in the grave over there? Like a lot of, unfortunately, Christian people tell us. Yeah, we're in a hole in the ground. No, that's your flesh body. We're bound by the laws of thermodynamics. Ashes to ashes, dust to dust. The flesh body is an open system in the laws of thermodynamics. That means it can take on physical matter. Yeah, we eat and something happens out the back door. But in the meantime, it's kinetic energy that dissipates heat. It's the transformation of energy. Energy never loses its value. It stays within the universe. That's your flesh body. Ashes to ashes, dust to dust. Good. Don't want it anymore. Your spirit, your psyche. That's what it's written in the manuscripts. Your psyche. That's a closed energy. When we're exchanging information, that's an energy. Don't allow that energy to be to be corrupted. Like when we're talking to each other, there's no metabolic process going on there. Energy cannot be created or destroyed. So what is your psyche energy? It can't be created or destroyed. But because it's an open energy, not physical matter, just other energy, the energy coming off the screen. Don't let it meta your energy in the bad way, Facebook. What happens then? Confusion, uncertainty, consternation, stupefaction that results in the structural characteristics of the outcome when you allow your energy to become a scattered energy, the gradual decline into disorder. Oh my goodness, are we seeing it playing out on the world stage today? Now, when an individual does not have a linear progression towards the truth that only comes from this, the truth, 
the great separating force between right and wrong, good and evil, and heaven and hell. When they do not have a linear progression towards the truth, they develop a scattered energy. And then, the, and then there's an emptiness. There's a void in these people. We pray for these people. Your psyche, your spirit has to go somewhere. We have psychiatrists and we have uh, psychologists and people develop psychosis and we have psychopaths out there running around on planet Earth, these snakes in suits with their energy trying to wage a psychological warfare on you. Be careful because you will die at the most inconvenient time. Fate won't negotiate no matter how big of a star you think you are. You better have your spiritual body tight, meek. Don't mess with me. I'm a Christian. I'm meek. You're not going to play psych games with me. Now, we're talking about... <laughs> okay, can I get a bit carried away there? Even them which are asleep. Okay, where are the dead? Okay. For... Okay. That we sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. Okay, people, we feel horrible for these people that don't understand not just the laws of thermodynamics. The Bible's told us about the laws of thermodynamics forever ago, including the laws of quantum physics. And now since I already talked about science, I'll talk about a little bit more. Quantum physics scientists... Hmm, is that uh look up into the sky hey bill nye what is that is it matter is it physical matter or is it energy and quantum physics scientists call that energy the field well we've been calling that energy the holy spirit for thousands of years it has the authoritative diminutive authority on physical matter what do you think keeps that moon right there not crashing into the earth what do you think keeps this earth not crashing into the sun it's not chaos god created the heavens and the earth it's that divine invisible force just because it's beyond our current perception and understanding of physics get over it god executes performances far beyond our current understanding of physics us reduced and restricted in these flesh bodies Scientists get these grants. They have to just write anything. They have to account for the money that they get. So be careful about your psyche. Be careful. I think I'm getting into this a little bit too far, but about people that are asleep. Don't We feel sorry for these people that claim to be atheists and they just think, this is it. Not I'm just going to die. It may as well be dog eat dog. It's all in for me or whatever. They don't know where they're going when they die. They have a, no inner peace. They, they're panicking inside even though they can put on a brave facade. There's a void in them. And this is what Paul's saying. This is true Christian love, Christian charity. I'm going to tell you how the Lord Jesus Christ is going to wrap up the affairs of time on this flesh age and where the people went that aren't around anymore. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. Now, let's go over this because <clears throat> remember, this is a translation, so I'll go back to the manuscripts. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, now this word rose again is Strong's G450, anastemia, anastemia. And it is a one word phrase. Rose again is one word in the manuscripts. And this is what it means. Listen, I'll break it down for you, okay? It's a preposition, starts it. Anna is a preposition. And it means each and every one. So rose again, watch this, each and every one. And this goes down to verse 16, the word rise. Maybe I should have done this with the word rise. Rise and rose, verse 14, verse 16. The dead in Christ shall rise first. Rose again. Okay, now I hope I'm not getting too confusing here. Histamia is the second part of this word. It is a sustained authoritative force taking a stand. So when we say, and rose again, it's a one word phrase. It means to be brought forward. Even so them also which sleep in Christ will God bring with him. They're already there, man. The second that you kick the bucket. 
or however you want to say it, in the book of Ecclesiastes, when that silver cord's broken, in the twinkling of an eye, your psyche, your spirit, bound by the laws of thermodynamics, bound by the laws of God, goes somewhere. Energy cannot be created or destroyed. The flesh body in the dirt, man. Who cares? The spirit, your psyche, goes somewhere. That's what he's saying. Hey, instantly, you're with the Lord Jesus Christ because we know that from Lazarus and the rich man. Where was Lazarus? Chilling with Abraham. Where was the rich man? On the other side of the gulf. And what was he doing in all his audacity, his arrogance, his ignorance, the overfed, the unconcerned? He's sitting there telling Abraham, Abraham, tell Lazarus to go get me a glass of water. Can you see I'm thirsty? Tell, tell Lazarus. He's sitting there still being a boss. Arrogant, ignorant, the trademarks of evil, aggressive. If those people, if the rich man was allowed in the kingdom of heaven, It'd be nothing more than a new hell. There has to be a division. And he can sit over there all fired up. That's the internal passion of the mind until you can get over it. And you don't want to be on that side of the gulf, the hell side. And this is what is being said here. Okay. If we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them that which are asleep in Jesus will God bring with them. Why? Because they're already there. For this we say unto you, by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. This, okay, so is Paul still around today? No, he died. He kicked it a long time ago. Listen, we get a hundred years or less. So when Paul wrote this, For this we say unto you, by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain, not Paul, not the people we writing to in Thessalonian, but to us, this Bible's written for us, we re and remain until the coming of the Lord, shall not prevent them which are asleep. This word prevent in the manuscripts is the word Strong's G5348. It means proceed, come before. You can't come before them if we're still in the flesh when Jesus Christ returns. Some of us will be here, some of us won't. Who knows? Jesus Christ tells us. He gives us the signs and the seasons. That means signs right off the first page of your Bible from the two unique light givers. Signs and seasons. Signs means things to come. Like when you're driving down the freeway, oh, you see your exit sign? Your exit's about to come. Seasons means at their appointed times. And Jesus Christ tells us all things. He says that in Mark 13. I told you all things. He goes, he went over the seals, trumps, vials in Mark 13. I've told you everything. This is how the affairs of time in this flesh age are going to wrap up. It's going to be a religious authority of deception. They're going to come up with rapture theories and mid-trib and pre-trib. And they're going to keep get you right away from hearing God's word. They have a toxic bowl. That word bowl is toxin in the Greek. It's fiery darts of Satan. Remember, political systems, unelected world, unelected world leaders like uh, Uncle Bill and Uncle Klaus going around making world policy. It's, it's not scary to us because Jesus Christ told us all things. World economy, it's economic warfare on people. It's psychological warfare on people. Economical warfare. Political warfare. The American military industrial complex. Are you kidding me? Like what they're doing to their own people. Let alone where they're dropping $100 billion worth of bombs. Come on. And they're using this education system that's a global media through obsessive messaging, creating a mob mentality, an obscene mob scene, drumming up patriotism through censorship of the truth to try and convince some of the greatest people on planet Earth, these people right here in America, great people, the worst political system in the history of mankind, career criminals, war criminals out of Washington, D.C., supporting uh, merchants of death, taking money all from these people, inflicting grinding poverty on these people. New York Stock Exchange, Hollywood. There's your access of evil right there. And it's written right, right in the 
seals Trump's files. They've all culminated now. We're living in the great apostasy of the truth right now. And actually, Paul uses that word. I'm getting ahead of myself. But let's just say, okay. For thus we say unto you, by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. Hey, we're not going to proceed. That We're not going to be in front of them because they're already there. Like they came before us. They're with Christ. When it says in Jesus, it means to and through him. In him. It's to him, through him. Go look up those uh, articles in your... or. Um, the pronouns or articles, doesn't matter. You can look that up in the lexicons and you can see how this comes together. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. Yeah, he descends from heaven. Because we know from the book of Samuel, when Saul, who couldn't even keep care of his dad's dumb asses, uh, was summoned up, tried to summon up Samuel, but he knew what he was doing. And he summoned up demons, devil. He summoned up an evil spirit, a demon from up. They always come from below. They come from up. Jesus Christ comes down because the hell is down there. The nether parts of the earth where there is no praise or presence of God. Don't underestimate the power of demons, devils, evil spirits because they'll play a snare drum on your head, which is this. Play a snare drum on your head, which what, what does it? What does it fuel? Egotism. It's a rapture theory. I'm mid-trib. I'm pre-trib, Michael. Yeah, yeah, we're a preacher up here. Why don't you just get lost with your Bible study? And I did. <laughs> okay, so shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, with the trump of God, and the dead, that's the people that are asleep, they're in the they're not in the grave, but a lot of people think they are, and that's pretty sad. If you think that grandma's languishing in a hole in the ground at the cemetery, she's gone, man. Ashes to ashes, dust to dust. Her psyche. Grandma's psyche's there, just beyond her current understanding of physics. That energy cannot be created or destroyed. We're back with Father. We're back with the Lord Jesus Christ. But are you in good standing? Because in the book of Psalms, it says you will get promoted to one side or the other side. So be careful. The dead in Christ, in Christ that's with him, through him, together with him, shall rise first. There's your the word rose again which is a phrase it's a one word it's any anastemia and it means will be brought forward not rise up out of the ground like hollywood god's not a cartoon man it's not a freak show this is extremely natural okay? there's nobody coming up out of the graves there's nobody flying away here our spirit obviously is encompassed by the air the next verse then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the lord in the air so that we shall be with the lord and we know from the book of zechariah and other places that we're instantly in the spiritual body when jesus christ shows up on the scene it's it's over for the flesh the flesh bodies get snuffed right away instantly we're back in our spiritual bodies instantly there's no more flesh it's over so caught up in the air air just means all encompassing of life that's where your spirit goes that's where your psyche goes that's where that energy goes yeah we've been we're reduced and restricted right now it's beyond our current perception and even understanding of physics sort of because it's right there in front of us remember okay remember uh matthew 26 jesus christ just hours before the cross what he says he said do you think i can't have seventy-two thousand angels here at the drop of a dime is that what you think like obviously they're right there just beyond our current understanding of physics it's like elijah's eye uh, uh, armor bearer it was like jacob's ladder just okay i'll let you see for a quick second and then back okay Psalm 68, 17, God has an army of angels ready to rock. Read about them in Romans 9, James 5, Lord of Sabaoth. Sabaoth, that's God's army. God is the military leader of his army to get rid of evil. It's all concentrated here on planet Earth right now. Don't get raked up into it. Like it says in the, in the fourth seal, it's, it's death. And it's dragging hell behind it. Don't get raked up in it. 
Exodus 15.3, the Lord is a man of war. Today, this is what Yahweh, our Father, is out of Yeshua Messiah to those who refuse Christ's redeeming power. Remember through the Bible, God tells, Lo Ami, you're not my people in the Hebrew. Ami, you are my people. Come back to me. I don't consider you my people if you want to harbor those negative thought patterns. And remember what it says in Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 21, three times in the Bible. This is such an important verse. Woe unto those with child who give suck in those days. It's got nothing to do with mama and a baby. It's got to do exactly with nursing along false doctrine. Woe unto them with, who are with child and give suck in those days. These are the exact same days, Matthew 24, when we're talking about when Jesus Christ wraps up the affairs of time on this flesh age, we're in the sixth trump seal vial in this part of the Bible, Matthew 24, verse 18. And then pray ye that your flight not be in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day. That's out of season. That's why our flight, we're just leaving this flesh body. We are spiritual beings going through a human experience for correction. So then we go, like if you want more on this, one to them who are with child that gives suck. It's about nursing along false doctrine. Egotism nurses along false doctrine. Just go to chapter 7 of the book of Psalms. And it'll tell you exactly what they mean. The Bible always interprets itself. Just follow those glossary threads that run through the Bible. And always remember, you approach the Bible with, like, just with, with just general logic okay like you look for patterns and the patterns are found for interpretation and glossary threads that run through the bible through the etymology of the key words from the manuscripts through the lexicons this is a translation into english okay now verse 14 of psalm 7 behold he travaileth with iniquity and have conceived mischief and brought forth falsehood inside of you if you're carrying that and you're conceiving it falsehood deception a different religious authority than God. If you've been stabbed or shot by the fiery dart of Satan, you have to know how to pull it out and get rid of it. Because God says, in the book of Hosea, people not returning to God as a religious authority are a deceitful bow, a bow of deception. It has strength. The religious leaders shall fall by the sword for the rage of their tongue, is which means that religious leaders doesn't just mean people behind the pulpit. Religion just means a follower of one's own beliefs. If people believe in money, they believe in political systems, they believe the global media, they've allowed that to become the religious system and it's accumulated or culminated into the fifth file seal in Trump, the great apostasy, the great falling away from God's truth. Okay, you're travailing, conceiving mischief. You're conceiving false doctrine and it... Look what it does. It causes division, chaos, disorder, pandemonium, distrust. It's the fire. It's the internal passion of the mind. And look what it's doing on planet Earth today. The division, disorder, distrust. God's word is about unity, coming together as a human family. That's what we're here for. We're here for correction. And this is why the Lord Jesus Christ set up a millennium temple before we get to go back to the eternity. That 1,000 year period is for correction we're still okay listen you had your ministry there and there was a ministry here uh, we didn't see eye, eye, eye to eye on certain things then we can talk about things and think about things and we discuss things it's a priestly kingdom the millennium period and it's for people that didn't have a chance who were oppressed by the world economy these political leaders the education system they were oppressed and God is judge. He will let us know when we're there, who's on one side and who's on the other side. Obviously, people that had no chance are going to be in the Millennium Temple. It's a priestly kingdom. We're going to be teaching this book. We're going to be teaching each other. The promise is written in the councils of eternity so the Lord Jesus Christ can present us as a virgin bride to father so we can get on with the eternity as it's written in psalms chapter 90 in the circuits of time door in the hebrew 
the generations means the circuits of time. It's a different word, generations, for posterity of parentage. Okay, so there you have it. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds. It's the cloud of witnesses. Read your Bible. We use that figure of speech quite a bit. Clouds of witnesses to meet the Lord in the air. Air just means all-encompassing of life of our spirit. So shall we be with the Lord forever. Comfort each other with these words. And then what happened? Go to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. And we can see, even back then, some people took this out of context. Because... Okay, I'm having problems with this MacBook Pro. And uh, that sucks because I don't have any money to even dream about buying a new one. Okay, let's go to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together with him, and I hope this is recording, that you should be not soon shaken in mind nor troubled. Same subject as chapter 4. Paul's going to go over chapter 4 for us from 1 Thessalonians. This is his second letter back because they sent a letter to him asking him questions. That's what we do. And that's what we're supposed to do with each other, not point fingers that's forbidden in the Bible. Ask questions. Don't be shaken in mind or troubled by spirit, your psyche, nor by word, by what someone else is saying, nor by letter. That's this letter that we just read from, 1 Thessalonians. Now he's writing to say, okay, don't be troubled by that chapter 4. As for us, as the day of Christ is at hand. I'm going to go over the exact same subject as chapter 4 of 1 Thessalonians. First warning, let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there be a, a falling away first. The word falling away is one word in the, in the Greek and it's apostasy. We're talking about the great apostasy. Paul has just wound up all the four dynasties the four horsemen white man's construct into the fifth the great apostasy the killing of the truth do not let anyone deceive you great warning throughout the bible that the man of sin shall be revealed the son of perdition before all this happens that's satan himself that's the six vile six seal six trump clearly that has not happened yet and who is this son of perdition he opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Hey, Satan defiled the sanctuary. We know that is part of his death sentence in Ezekiel chapter 28. That's what he did. Satan, what did he do? He cast doubt on the truth. That's Satan's currency. The enemy of love, our Lord Jesus Christ, is hate. The enemy of clarity is clutter. Doubt is Satan's currency. He, I just said it, um, defiled the sanctuary, Ezekiel chapter 28. Satan and his army of snakes and suits perpetually cast doubt on the truth. And we can see it right here in the four seals, trumps and vials. That's the four horsemen that are stomping planet earth today remember horse just means a mobile power an energetic power that is able to move around it's expressive it's revealing four horsemen now we're going to go to isaiah chapter 14 because we just basically quoted it and let's just go there quickly and i'll try and wrap up this podcast early i'm having troubles with the computer and I think I need a new MacBook Pro. It sucks. And I don't know where I'm going to get the money for that. So, who opposeth and exalted himself above all that is called God or that is worship, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. This is what Satan thinks, the great falling star, Lucifer. That's what falling star means. In the Vulgate, it's Stella Lucidia, Lucifer. In the Arab, it's splendid star. In the, in the Hebrew, it is... Bright morning star. Bright shining life force. Lucifer, son of the morning. How thou, a 
cut down, which did weaken the nations. That's what he's doing through his four dynasties. They're not so hidden. Satan's greatest trick is to fool the whole world into thinking that he does not exist. But we can see him playing out on the world stage today. Do not be deceived. For thou hast said in thy heart, you Satan, this is what you said. And we just read about this in Second Thessalonians chapter 2. I will ascend into heaven, and I will exalt my throne above the stars of God, all God's children, bright shining life forces, the hosts of heaven, the all the um, bright shining life forces, the stars, all God's children, the saints, and it doesn't matter. He thinks he's going to exalt his throne above the stars of God. I will sit upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds clouds of witnesses i will be like the most high and then what does god say yet i shall be brought down you thou shall be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit satan i'm gonna mop you up in a bucket and slosh you down to the pit with anyone that wants to give you your energy through their psyche you're sharing the energy together a lot of people are going to end up down there it's egotism get over yourself this is the truth the truth will set you free Son of perdition be revealed, who opposeth and exalteth himself. We just read all about that in Isaiah chapter 14. Remember you not that when I was yet with you, I told you all things. Go to Matthew chapter 13. Mark chapter 13. I told you all this stuff. I told you this over and over and over. In the book of Daniel, through the prophets, I came in the volume of the book. My name is Lord Jesus Christ. I am the living word. I'm your teacher, your master, your rabbi, your wonderful counselor. I am wisdom personified. You are my children. God wants his children back. They can only be redeemed through the Lord Jesus Christ. He's telling us all things. I told you, this is what Paul says. Remember when I, when I told you? And yet I was with you. I told you all this stuff. And so did Jesus Christ throughout this whole book. Satan comes first. It goes one, two, three, four, five, six. Five seals, trumps, files. Six, Satan shows up on the scene. Seven, it's verse six. Remember, you know, when I was yet with you, I told you these things, and you know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. I think the translator was drunk this day, so let's just, uh, yeah. Okay, the manuscripts. Let's go to the manuscripts. Let's talk about this. And I should have this written down, and I don't, but I know it anyway. Withholdeth and letteth are the same word in the Greek, and it is pronounced kecheko. It's a verb. It means restrain. So the translator put withholdeth in one verse letteth in another verse from the same word it is a transitive verb therefore the object must be supplied go back two verses we're talking about satan who's holding satan michael jude jude verse 9 michael's holding satan revelation chapter 12 we know that the mystery of iniquity the mystery just means secret among friends we know this together, a secret among friends. We're part of God's army. We're part of the hosts of heaven. I didn't finish that thought. I see my note. First Samuel 1 Samuel 1.3, the Lord of hosts. And that's sabav. And it comes from the bird sevab. It means to come forth as a star, bright shining life force, assembly of angels. Mark chapter 12, we are the angels. Revelation chapter 19, remember when Johnny hit the dirt in front of an angel? And started worshiping him, and the angel said, Hey, I'm your fellow brother. Yo, I'm I'm a servant of God just like you. And as we are to be as the servants of God, as soldiers against the enemy of evil. Second Kings 25, Jeremiah 52, and the list goes on. We are the angels. As soon as we're out of these nagging nuisance, my aching back, my shoulder hurts, I'm hungry, I gotta go up, you know out of these bodies and then we better be fighting for god and not for which white man's construct because evil will destroy itself from within as it's written not only as it's written as we can see it playing out on planet earth today obviously we're going to destroy this planet it's a joke but that's the evil all the evil in the world is instigated by this one the mystery of iniquity that's what Satan perpetuates. And all the evil in the world 
comes from the human heart. The human heart perpetuates it. Satan instigates it. What does iniquity mean? Iniquity means just violator of human rights. It's morally corrupt, ethically corrupt thought patterns. Thought patterns, intentions, and actions. Socially corrupt, spiritually corrupt. We can see it playing out on the world stage today. Like, it doesn't get any worse than this. We're like, not even like two minutes away from nuclear war. Just somebody has to make the call, press the button. Oh, yeah, we won. We sure showed them with our nuclear weapons. It's, it's just beyond all reasonable. It just makes no sense. It's a paradox of impossibilities. And that paradox of impossibilities is playing out on the world stage right now today. These are wide open. So what's the fifth? We're waiting for the sixth. Watch that little horn coming up. And the little horn comes up. It doesn't matter if you're left wing, right wing. It doesn't matter if you're Republican, Democrat. Can't you see little horn coming up? There's a horn coming up in the middle. We have a central enemy get over trying to prove each other wrong over non-issues. The central enemy is obviously showing its face through the American military industrial complex. They don't care if it's Democrat or Republican. They're going to take all the money, oppress the people, and kill hundreds of thousands of others because they can't get enough money. They're just ruthless, unadulterated greed. They want control. Don't forget about these unelected world leaders, Uncle Bill, Uncle Klaus. Like, they're just living in this in this sociopathic energy. They're social predators who, ch who charm, social predators who charm and manipulate to fulfill their own agenda, even if it entails a total absence of humanity. They've gone the way of Cain. They're fugitives and vagabonds from the word of God. The mystery of iniquity doth already work. And he who now letteth, okay, where did I say that word met? Who's restraining him? Michael. Well, let him rip until he be taken out. So Satan did manifest in, in one of our forms like this, in the flesh, in the garden. And then he was taken away by Michael. And God is in control. Remember the book of Job? Satan suggests God allows it. I hope this is recording. And then shall the wicked, that wicked be revealed excuse me, who the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Jesus Christ is going to wrap up the affairs of time in this age. He's going to take out Satan, mop him up in a bucket as it's written in the book of Isaiah chapter 14, slosh him down into the pit. He stays there for a millennium period. He's loose for a short season. In that millennium period, it's a priestly kingdom. That's me. That's you. We have a job. We are the advantage ones. If you have a computer, you have a screen in front of you, then you don't have no excuse for not following these promises written in the councils of eternity and supporting it by glorifying, magnifying, and helping broadcast God's saving word. These are great promises. This is what allows us to sleep at night. Imagine people walking in darkness, and this is their religious authority. That's their system of beliefs. They're careful followers of people that lie, create economic hardship on people from these these leaders that even in the book of daniel it says god said i'll put the i'm going to put the lowest base people to be the world leaders why did he say that because evil has to be exposed and who's going to follow it now let's just read a little bit even him after who's coming is after the working of satan Jesus Christ comes after. That's when we gather back to him in the air, all encompassing of life. No more physical matter for us. We're back in our psyche, our spirit body. Energy cannot be created or destroyed. It has to go somewhere. The flesh body in the dirt, pushing daisies. That's the cycle of energy in the ecosystem. Okay, get over your flesh body. And that should give you great comfort. There's no one laying in the... The cemetery and they're not going to dig their way up like it's a scene out of kill bill and be a walking zombie okay that's cartoons that's hollywood and that's pseudo christians translations because they just don't study the bible and it's sad come on dude let's go let's be together a many member body of christ it's a calling 
Jesus Christ says, assemble yourself, my peculiar people. That's your way out right now. And you can assemble yourself here if you would like. Companion Chapel, homesteading community. Okay, so at Jesus Christ comes and Satan has all the power and signs. We can see it happening. Signs means things to come. He's letting us know what's happening. The World Economic Forum tells us what's going to happen. Uh, the political systems tell us what's going to happen. Uncle Joe and his press secretary back in January and February 222 said, we're going to... We're going to blow up that pipeline. We're going to stop that pipeline. And then they asked Joe, Joe, how are you going to stop that pipeline? Joe's like, we'll stop that pipeline. We have the means. Who blew up the pipeline? Ecological terrorism. That's the biggest act of ecological terrorism ever committed on planet Earth by these war criminals. We pray for these people. Dude, snap out of it. Or you're going to end up going to hell can't point fingers at them we already know that they have evil in their hearts they're warmongers they don't care about humanity they care about money i don't what is the how much money do you need it doesn't okay that's fine and with all deceivableness deceivableness do not be deceived and unrighteousness in them that perish that's what's going to happen to you you're going to burn up from inside trying to convince everybody that you're right but as soon as jesus christ comes and wraps up the affairs of time on this age all these things get thrown into the pit, into the nether parts of the earth. Do you want to be down there with these things? There's no praise presence of God whatsoever down there. Those four things get thrown down there. And we're sitting there with the Lord Jesus Christ. And we're watching these people. And it's, no, you don't, you're not pointing, blaming, saying, I'm praying for these people. God wants all his children back. We want all our brothers and sisters back to get on with the eternity, to be in the circuits of time with Father. Now watch this. Because they receive not the love of truth that they might be saved. Yeah, their egotism. That's the common denominator of all this. They're unconcerned, overfed. They don't understand the Bible. They're mockers and scoffers. What's, what's the common thread to them? Arrogance, aggression, chronic disobedience, imaginative criticism. For this cause... God shall send them strong delusion that they may believe a lie. That's the spirit of slumber. It's written over and over in the Bible. And this send is emphatic. That means with an escort. It means your own personal demon. If you allow that energy to come into your psyche, it'll play a snare drum on your head that you're always right. You can't be wrong. Egotism. I'll send you strong delusion. God has to let all the evil that was ever in the universe, play itself out here. Who wants to play into it? Who wants to nurse it along? Woe unto them with child to give suck in those days. Nursing along false doctrine, you'll never have inner peace. It takes humbling to the core of your soul. Strong delusions out there. I could just want, I could just go like this and go, eh. yeah, good book, good book. Well, let's see what's on Netflix today. See if there's any documentaries on who cares. Or maybe in the Canadian government now, let's just smoke pot. Maybe I'll smoke pot, drink beer, and just watch movies all night. If you want some strong delusion, messing with your energy, be careful what you absorb from people directly. You're exchanging energy when you talk, when you're receiving information. It's an open system. Energy cannot be created or destroyed. Don't allow that to become part of your psyche. Remember, oh, there's so many places in the Bible I could go right now. I wish you were here with me so we could just talk about the Bible and and then go out and just, we don't, we worship God, but we love his creations. We have to make a big garden here. There's 77 acres of land. There's 30 acres of woodlot here, right on a big giant river. Like this is just a luxury property. It's really rough right now, but it's a companion chapel homesteading community. Strong delusion that they might be damned who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. They enjoyed it. They enjoy fighting each other and pointing fingers at each other. You know what? It's like people that say to me, Oh, I hold grudges. Well, that gives you a little bit of power at first, but after it's just an emptiness. It's just a void. You know the person you're holding a grudge against could care less? Did you know that the punishment lies within the sin itself? Yeah, it eats you up and sap, burns you up. It's the internal passion of the mind. That's what's happening in hell. It's not a torch burning people. You're burning yourself up from inside. And I think that's it for today. Matthew 24, Mark 13. 
Luke 21. Yeah, we went over that. I think that's enough for today. I want to thank you very much. Uh, Companion Chapel is a registered nonprofit. Whatever God-given talent you have. If you can help with these videos or anything that you have to help out with the Companion Chapel, get involved today. I love the emails. Ask me questions. Ask questions about the Bible. Don't be pointing fingers. He's wrong. Downvote. Downvote. You know, because then it's at the bottom of the algorithms. And obviously, these are low-volume videos. And when you do that, I just get kicked off. And that's what's been happening. And it's it's more of a struggle to try and stay on than and I have to study for hours and hours and try and come up with these broadcasts and living in grinding poverty. But I do it for you because I love you, because I want us all to get back to a place of peace beyond our present comprehension. God wants his children back. They can only be re redeemed through our Lord Jesus Christ. And I could say I love you without even knowing you the same way people can just hate each other without even knowing each other. Isn't that just horrible? We're all part of the human family. I want to thank you very much for watching. I hope this recorded. Have yourself a great day and bye for now.